Uh, I'm speaking from Imam Abdurrahman bin Faisal University. Uh, for all attendees, thank you so much. I see there is uh, attendance from all over the world now. Now, let's uh, thank you for all, and I really appreciate uh, the attendance. We are continuing our um, webinar series in the uh, quality accreditation and the excellence uh, topics. Um, and this is under um, uh, the auspices of His Excellency, uh, Professor Abdullah Rubesh. Uh, I really thank him for his, his, his support and his dedication to keep this uh, ongoing. Uh, and definitely is proud to announce our webinar today uh, for the enhancement of equality skills all over the world as uh, as ongoing a project from University of Imam Abdurrahman bin Faisal University, uh, our we, the one we call and we like we would like to call it IU University. Um, just we'll have a brief about IU if you allow us, please. Sorry for the delay, it's just a matter of technical work. We try to uh, bring the video. There's a video clip about Imam Abdurrahman bin Faisal University in a second. تمر جامعة الإمام عبد الرحمن بن فيصل بمرحلة ارتفعت فيها التوقعات حيث يسهم التعليم في تقدم الأمم ولذا تنطلق جامعتنا من رؤيتها الاستراتيجية جامعة رائدة تسعى إلى التميز محليا وإقليميا وعالميا وتهدف إلى تحقيق رسالتها على الوجه الأكمل في تقديم خدمات معرفية وبحثية ومهنية إبداعية بشراكة مجتمعية فاعلة ومن خلال قيمها الأصيلة وعلى مدى تاريخنا العريق منذ أن تأسست عام 1975 ميلادي فرعا من جامعة الملك فيصل بمدينة الدمام مرورا بصدور القرار السامي لتحويلها إلى جامعة مستقلة عام 2009 تحت اسم جامعة الدمام ثم انفصال جامعة حفر الباطن من رحم جامعة الدمام في عام 2014 وأخيرا بتشريفها بمسمى جامعة الإمام عبد الرحمن بن فيصل في عام 2016 
كما تميزت الجامعة بالحصول على العديد من الاعتمادات المحلية والعالمية على مدى السنوات الماضية ونحن فخورون بهذا الإنجاز والذي بني على خطط استراتيجية تجسد اختيارنا لنموذج الجامعة الشاملة أداة لتحقيق رسالتنا في خدمة الوطن عموما والمنطقة الشرقية على وجه الخصوص وينتشر منسوبون في ستة مواقع في المنطقة الشرقية ويبلغ عدد موظفينا نحو ثمانية آلاف موظف ما بين أعضاء هيئة التدريس والكادر الإداري والطبي كما يدرس في الجامعة ما مجموعه خمسة وثلاثون ألفا من الطلبة ينتشرون في تسعة عشر كلية وخمسة وثمانين برنامجا ضمن أربع قطاعات طبية وهندسية وإدارية علمية وإنسانية ومصنفة كالتالي المسار الصحي كلية الطب كلية طب الأسنان كلية الصيدلة الكلينيكية كلية العلوم الطبية التطبيقية بالدمام كلية التمريض كلية الصحة العامة كلية العلوم الطبية التطبيقية بالجبيل المسار الهندسي كلية الهندسة كلية العمارة والتخطيط كلية التصاميم المسار العلمي كلية علوم الحاسب وتقنية المعلومات كلية إدارة الأعمال كلية العلوم كلية العلوم والدراسات الإنسانية بالجبيل المسار الإنساني كلية الآداب كلية التربية كلية العلوم والدراسات الإنسانية بالجبيل كليات لا تتبع السنة التحضيرية كلية الدراسات التطبيقية وخدمة المجتمع كلية الشريعة والقانون وكلية المجتمع Thank you so much. Uh, this is where we are in Imam Abdul Rahman bin Faisal. Just a, a brief information to what we have. I just want to remind uh, 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 our attendees, uh, we're going to start our presentation now. Uh, and there is a, a button called Q&A. If there is any question, please try to write it. There is a, a, a session allotted to, to, to the question or inquiry about it. Uh, this. Uh, um, webinar series that comes from uh, initiative call, we call it in the university uh, uh, under the Ministry of Higher Education, Minister of Education, call it JUSUR initiative, which is uh, basically uh, a process to improve uh, Imam Abdurrahman bin Faisal University through this initiative. Uh, and uh, the aim of it is to improve our ranking and academic accreditation, and also to it's a communicating hub to all the community in the world. Uh, uh, from this, we have also uh, uh, friend, a friend of university. Uh, thanks, we have uh, now a group, uh, hundreds of uh, friends university from all over the world. Uh, they are a part of it. They are, attended, uh, they are in attendance as well and communicating with us about Imam Abdurrahman bin Faisal. Today, um, we will have our um, topic. This is a very important topic. I think um, all the faculty and academic need to hear about performance indicator uh, from our, uh, our delegates. Uh, the title is The Art of Designing and Measuring Key Performance Indicator, the KBIs, for academic program and communicating the results to stakeholders. Three major pillars to this topic. How does an institution design and measure KPI for its academic program uh, and effectively communicate the findings? How do we benchmark our performance, in the, which is, I mean, i.e. understanding the principle and ground rule of benchmarking? And the third will be the new normal uh, paperless online system. We, we would like to welcome um, uh, two, two uh, uh, delegates uh, we have hosting today, Professor Lede Wuzurnu and Dr. Nil uh, Park. Um, 
let me just before I introduce my delegates, uh, I will just touch the basis of, of key performance indicators to have a, gr a ground role to the, uh, the, the, the KPI itself. KPI is a set of a quantifiable, a quantifiable measurement used to measure uh, an institutional overall long-term performance. Uh, KPI help to determine the university strategic financial operational achievement, especially uh, when you want to compare to other institutions with other, with other sector. Uh, and on higher education, it can be used to determine changes within the university or compare with a group of, of peer universities, guide for decision making for universities. And we are using the KPI in higher education to aid the higher education to measure and track their progress on a specific uh, objective, also to help us to monitor and evaluate the performance and uh, direct their policy formulation and target setting, facilitating to facilitate the university to evaluation the process, uh, also provide information for accreditation bodies, provide information for the state uh, uh, seeking uh, uh, and, uh, trans uh, and the transparency and accountability. Uh, for theme one, how does an institution design and measure KPI for its academic program and effectively communicate the findings? Before designing the KPI for an, an, an academic program, uh, and we're gonna hear really uh, important information from our delegate about it, determine strategic objective, define the success, decide on measurement, also effectively to communicate the findings of KPI through reports, the presentation dashboard. Within the, th within the theme two, um, we're gonna highlight the benchmark as a process that involve measure, um, uh, uh, measure uh, uh, measuring the performance of the institution against uh, 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 a competitor in the same sector. Um, and uh, that's been, uh, Benefits of benchmark is very important. That's identify one's strength and weakness, monitor the university performance and manage change more effectively. And we have steps uh, bench of the benchmark. Uh, it will be highlighted more by uh, uh, by our uh, our uh, uh, our delegates. Uh, the theme number three, uh, we're gonna focus in the paperless online system and the use of it, and especially we have and measure the KPI during COVID-19. And there is a really a good advantages to be highlighted by our, uh, our delegates. Today, I really uh, honored to introduce uh, 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 my, uh, my friend and my colleague and, uh, and my, my, my father uh, as a matter of fact in quality. Uh, I learned from this, this person for years of my life. I've been with him since 90s. He's not that old, definitely, but uh, he's, he's, he's really the man of equality. When I speak about the Prof. Ladi, I speak about the history of equality since 1989, uh, since, since long back when we have the first uh, uh, symposium about quality health. And that time, nobody knows really, and nobody really give attention to quality with his uh, educational and academic background he really pick up that topic and acknowledge uh, that importance of it. Um, uh, Professor Lade was is a graduate of Glasgow University with honors, a fellow of Ghana Academy of Arts and Science, and currently a member of council. He's a professor in surgery. Uh, 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 of course, he's retired now. And uh, and by the way, he is uh, he, he has uh, he has a boy and he has books in that. I really enjoy reading this and his co columnist and uh, uh, writing, writing really in a newspaper as well. Uh, and, and, uh, and his thoughts, uh, wise thoughts, fellowship from Royal College of Surg Surgery at Denver and in Glasgow, fellow Ghana College physician, a former member of the National Council, WHO international consultant, and which of the main important is not there in front of you, he was, a consultant and director of equality for years in our in, 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 in King Faisal University in that time, the University of Dammam. We established together, we worked together 
one of the best days we enjoy the time back in 2000, uh, 2010, 2005, then we established the strategic plan for the, for the University of Dammam. And this is strategic plan with, with, with prominent, uh, 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 really faculty uh, in the university under his, under his excellency, Professor Abdurrahman Rubesh. And that time he was vice president. This is in years, really, it's a good memory to have you, Prof. Ladi. Um, the other uh, delegates, uh, it's really honored to, to, to introduce Dr. Nil Art. Dr. Nil, uh, we know her as uh, is a famous within, within ASIN accreditation. Dr. Anil, Dr. Nil is the director of the Accreditation Commission for Education in Nursing, ASIN, has been active in nursing accreditation since 2004 working full time with ASIN since 2012, where one of her primary roles working with nursing program, pursuing candid candidacy and initial accreditation with agency. In 1983, Dr. Art completed her bachelor degree uh, at Harvard, at Harvard in, in Arkansas. In 1988, she completed the master uh, in family nursing um, in 1999, completed her PhD in nursing from University of Texas Health Science Center at San Antonio in clinical research. Dr. Nell was a clinical nurse specialist for 13 years, a nurse education for 30, 40, 47 years. Dr. Nell has been certified nurse educator since 2007 and follow in the academic nurse since 2009, she has served in a variety of statewide and national committees related to nursing education and extensive publication included article uh, and, and, and book chapters. She is well known. We, re we really learn from her uh, a lot. Uh, she, was, she was really supervising the, 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 the process for ACE accreditation for the nursing program where we are really proud of. We have College of Nursing. They, they, they earn the, 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 ACE, the ACE accreditation internationally. We are so proud of them with support of the ACE administration. Dr. Nil is one of them. Um, uh, thank you so much for everything you did for, for, for the education of nurses and you are continuing with it. Um, now uh, I really introduce my uh, my uh, uh, my delegates for today, which is they are. I'm, I'm really honored to have them. Uh, uh, let me uh, start with the Prof. Ladi. Prof. Ladi was or no? Uh, he is uh, gonna introduce topic number one. Prof. Ladi, the floor is yours, sir. Thank you very much indeed. Um... His Excellency Professor Abdallah Rubesh, President of the IAU, uh, the Vice, uh, His Excellency, the Vice President, uh, Dr. Lakadi, all other Vice Presidents, in fact, from the sister universities. I must also address the President, Vice President of the Fellows, the Ghana Academy of Arts and Sciences, deans, staff, students, my moderator, a co-panelist, invited guests, ladies and gentlemen. This speaker is grateful to His Excellency Professor Abdullah Rubesh for kindly inviting him to function as the panelist in today's webinar. This is the first slide that I have. Uh, actually, um, as you can see, um, the topic has been beautifully introduced by our moderator. It's already there. The objectives are quite simple. I wanted to define the term, and I would like to suggest to, uh, to uh, participants that you can utilize space travel as a concept, and then we shall do well to embrace the approved design. And then <laughs> I have to warn that um, uh, if we choose the lists of KPIs, that's the easy part to measure the variables named in the definition and then to anticipate inherent risks in measurements to describe how IAU seeks to minimize 
this Prof. Lad, if you allow me, just uh, because yes. the photo, you can adjust the camera, half of your face, it will be people, people oh. seeing it. Oh. You just you need to, to, to adjust the camera to make it a little higher. No, just a little bit down, a little, little down, little down. Here we go. Thank you. Thank you. Is all set. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Okay. And sure. then go I ahead. just want to go say ahead. that uh, we would like not to agree that KPIs, uh, we have to view the results of KPIs from three academic years in two programs in our university, only programs A and B, they must be anonymous. And then yet yeah, an important point I'd like to ask all to bear in mind. KPS occupy the zone of numbers and drawn ups like numbers. And then to effectively communicate the findings to all, um, to all participants. These terms have been defined already, but we're going to focus, going to focus on the definitions from NCAA. It, it was mentioned already, the topic is mentioned there from the, the NC, uh, uh, DQAA, this one on the side. Uh, again, yes. Prof. Ladi, Prof. Ladi, can you make it in a slideshow, please? I will make it short, please. Uh, I can please. show you. Sure. I will make I'm, I'm keeping on the time. And uh, then they, they, you know where they are coming from. They are pre-selected and so on. And then over here, I have here also this an important concept my life to bear in mind. KPS have an origin. It's like space travel. They have an origin like the launching pad. Then they go to a space station where they are processed and then they come to the destination where they are utilized. They return the journey to the origin again. The NCAA is the origin. It is therefore very well resourced to be so. When it comes to the destination of the consumer, the colleges and the programs, it did, some of them, particularly the, the beginners, the first year students, might as well be on the moon because the environment is quite new to them. Now, this is I'm focusing exclusively on KPIs for the programs, exclusively on those. There are 17 of them approved by EEC and CAAA, and these are the first 10. You can see that on the left side, they are addressing the standard which the, uh, the, uh, the NCAA has chosen. And here we have four of them, mission and goals, teaching and learning, and the students. The middle are the numbers from one to 10, details are not important. The details here on the definition or the content of the KPIs are important. I'm not going to read all of them. This number two talk, focuses on evaluation of the program. So that's talking about the students at the end of the program. Number three talks about the quality of the courses. There are so many courses in each program, each one must be uh, addressed. Course completion, the first year students retention rate. So another very important variable to measure the, 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 the class or the standard of selection which universities employ. This is the performance of students at exams. Then this is an important one here. Employers availability of enrollment of our graduates later on, the average number of students in each class, there's the simple size. And then of course, employers evaluation of the proficiency of the program's graduates, and then student satisfaction with the service offered. The last 11 to 17 are talking that addressing teaching staff and learning resources and facilities. The teaching staff, there are these variables, uh, KPS, there are five of them, this simple ratio of the numbers, percentage distribution of teaching staff, proportion against the second numbers. Now this comes about the performance of the, of the instructors, percentage of publications of faculty members, the rate of published research per faculty member, citation rates in referred journals per faculty member. And then the last one, the satisfaction of all beneficiaries 
of the learning resources available. Now, over here, I have to remind us gently that we have two types of KPIs. One is number-based, the other one is opinion-based. The opinion-based ones, the NCAA has suggested a five-point scale to assess the opinion-based ones. The numbers are given here. There are two broad groups. It is either unsatisfactory or satisfactory. Unsatisfactory split into two, not at all, or partially, one or two. If this is well done, can be three grades, just compliant, or it can be perfect, or it can be exemplary, exemplary compliance. So this is how it's suggested that we should do this. We have no choice but to embrace the design. It's already approved by the NCAA. And they also already given the how to benchmark them by at the very beginning, they draw attention to the five levels of benchmarking. And I'd like us to remember that without approved benchmarking, a KPI remains a big cake. For each KPI, these five levels have been, uh, have been recommended and I'll revert to them from time to time as we go along. Now, this is important here, inherent risks and plan how to reduce these risks. With every measurement, there is a risk. KPIs, which are indirect measures or soft endpoints, the risks are, are connected with the customers, whether the external customers or internal customers. And who those are, are well known and don't need to stress them right now. Now, this is an important uh, uh, presentation here. It indicates that on the assumption that um, we can have four signs of risk, it can be zero risk or low risk. If the data is already available in a data bank, if it's yes, just transfer it to the KPI zone, the risk is zero. The data is available, but it's not ready to be used, you audit it, the risk is low. On the other hand, if the data is to be obtained from an opinion-based KPI, the risk can be moderate or high. If you are using internal customers, the risk is moderate. If you're using external customers, the risk is high. This may be a busy slide, but just focus on the bottom here. It tells you that uh, of the low risk, you have four low risk KPIs, eight, sorry, zero risk, four, eight, low risk, three, moderate risk, and two, high risk. Every person working on KPS must bear in mind that not all KPS are equal in terms of risk or difficulty in measuring them. But look at how IAU has gone to great lengths to ensure that they get accurate results. Those are the solutions for the anticipated risks in our wonderful university. They go as far as the value of the university, loyalty, excellence, teamwork, social responsibility. A whole vice presidency is assigned to ensure that we get adequately satisfactory and consistently good results. And this vice presidency chaired by His Excellency, I've named him already, Akadi, has under him, look at the subsections here, Documents Center, Alumni and Career Development Center, DQAA, uh, and ICT, and then here it is about service and community health. So they go to great lengths to engage the community so that when it comes to getting KPIs from them, they can be able to do so quite happily. Now we come to viewing the results of KPIs of uh, three uh, uh, academic years listed here. The KPIs are listed here. Do not con be concerned about the numbers. We're talking about how to make the presentation uh, easier for uh, the, 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 the stakeholders. This is program A, program B, program A, program B, and so on year one, year two, year three. The numbers are here not available. 
3.4, these are the opinion-based ones. Look at how the numbers are there. Yes, and if you are dealing in a deanship, yes, you can look at this number, which is what they mean that they look to you for you to interrogate. On the other hand, when it comes to effective communication of the findings, you need a slightly different approach. Here's Kula Kush. He says, the aim of communication is to be understood. We have at least two approaches to communicate the results. One, they are complementary. One is already prescribed by East NCAA, which has just been prescribed. The other is to use color coding. Green is high quality, amber or yellow is acceptable, and red improvement required. Now, when you do this, the results I showed you earlier, this is what they look like here. And you can see at the glance, at a glance, those which are red and yellow, at a glance, those who are green. Therefore, this technique of using color coding is also available with of to effectively communicate results of the KPIs to stakeholders. So the decision maker, anybody interested, can see this at PowerPoint or they can have access to it on their own dashboard. The green is the color that you want because it means higher quality. Those in yellow or red means we need to work out on that one. And then of course, it also says that uh, you can give the results to the that available is we tried and tested. This method is also available for us to use. In conclusion of part one, I've already gone through this, so I don't need to repeat them. We try to define the term. We've stressed the origin is NCAA. We use space travel as a reasonable model. We mentioned the 17 KPIs. We drew attention to the fact that measurement is not always easy. And we also saw that RAP, with the already been designed, installed, and implemented, but there are ways to minimize the risks. And then we use four results of KPIs to show how they can be viewed. We found that, yes, the numbers can be the way they are, or if you use them in colors, it makes life a lot easier. Thank you. That's the end of part one. Thank you very much. Now, with the permission, I'll go on to part one, uh, sorry, part topic number two. It says, how do we benchmark our performance and understand the principles and ground rules of, of performing this thing? The, the good thing is that Yes, the the uh, the the, um, uh, the the moderator has already given all this already in detail. So I shall be very very brief. I will not go through this again. Uh, the objectives are as you said, except to come to this. In his very opening message uh, to the strategic plan, His Excellency Dr. Rubesh indicated that we have to be flexible adaptable and responsive because circumstances change and require change. In a, in a manner, therefore, benchmarking is quite like sand, sand dunes. Just look what COVID has done to our benchmarks now. These names have already been given by NCAA, the actual, the targeted return and so on. But if you look at them, as a timeline, it helps you a great deal. The time zero is the actual benchmark. Year plus one is a new benchmark. Year minus one, a targeted uh, uh, benchmark. And then the average of minus one, minus two, and minus three, they form the internal benchmark. And then of course, you have the external benchmark, which we already talked about. Again, the criteria for selecting external benchmarks have been listed already. You have infrastructure required, must be quite similar across KSA in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. And then the data required by NCAA must be available so that you can make comparisons. And so it's always good or preferable to have good practice so that you can seek to continuously improve yourself. In short, choosing an external benchmark is looking for beds of the same fellow so they can flock together. Again, this has been mentioned already. 
DKAA has established the following criteria for fixing and revising target benchmarks already. This has been mentioned based on the data trend, the view of the college on target, the consensus of the senior committee, you select the external benchmark is mentioned already, the impl implication of the standard benchmarking for the program. The ground rules to be covered, we mentioned already, data across time should be available. You use uniform methodology to do it. You have to get standardized reporting system. The template is available for doing this thing. You use separate overall values for gender-based program. Now, this is important. If the program is dealing with all the boys, just one database is enough. But you have boys and girls, you need separate uh, 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 benchmarks for them. Similarly, if the programs are on different campuses, you need to have the KPIs for one campus and then the other campus. This is very important differences here. Core principles are already been listed here. Codes of conduct listed here. The core principles are you must support the mission said already, share the values, implement recommendations. This is important because it's always easy to implement recommendations, but you must remember that it must be implemented. But look at the one in block capitals, sorry, in bold. Support from the top. In IAU, we have perfect support, firm support, committed support from the very top, from the University Council, as a matter of fact. His Excellency, the, the President, is always available at our meetings. He's always available to give advice, always available to supply our requirements. That the supply from the top is mandatory, is very useful, and we're spoiled by that. If others are looking at this program now and they want to do something similar, believe me, with that support from the top, you will fail. Now, these are the five points mentioned already, confidentiality, publication, use, exchange, and of course, you have to sign agreement. In other words, this is the, uh, the, the usual MOU or the memorandum of understanding. I will not go over this, but this is the a standard template for reporting the KPIs. This level you already, know, already defined. They insist on the analysis. On the analysis of the name, the internal benchmark provider, explain why you chose that one and how you did the calculations. The same two uh, 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 reasons are expected for the external benchmark as well. Don't worry about the data here. This is taking just one example for the benchmarking uh, using numbers. Here is how they calculate the average. The years involved are specified here. The analysis involved are explained here. Again, this is exactly what you expect. This is what I said earlier with the timeline. When you come here, similar thing, but this time we were presented by bar graphs. The academic years are written here. These are academic years. And this is the particular benchmark which is being tested. And then this is the proportion staff with verified doctoral qualifications for this time period uh, is stated there. Then they went to the analysis. The strength was, was emphasized. The recommendations were made. But look at this one. Additional staff will be uh, with verified qualification are expected to handle the expected student load. So things are always changing. You must be aware of the change and plan for it accordingly. And they continue again, why this internal benchmark provider was chosen, reasons are given. How was calculation made? It was specified. The necessity knew about that. Again, how to name the internal benchmark? Yes, the deanship of quality of faculty and personal affairs, yes, and the vice deanship of quality and development. The very top, this is where the authority comes from for choosing the particular provider. When it comes to the external benchmarker here, this one, they indicate clearly what is expected of them. Comparability of the infrastructure facilities required in a program across the kingdom. Availability of data required by the Institute of LA. It's not just embracing 
an external bench uh, um, uh, facility as, a, as an external benchmarker when you cannot get the data. Now, this is the last slide for this particular section. Uh, it looks very busy. Ignore the first part and come to the proposed action plan. It's actually here should be the activity. Then you name the person responsible to do this, the start date, the ending date, and if the job isn't done, you indicate why it wasn't done. The conclusions are what you can expect. Thank you very much indeed. Um, th thank you, thank you, Prof. Ladi. Uh, I would like to introduce uh, uh, Dr. Nell. Uh, uh, are you there? Hello? Yes, I am. Yes, you, you can share your content, please. Okay. Yeah. Well, good morning you, and thank you very yeah, much. Can you, can you share the slide, please? Now we see your, your the desktop you have. It should be coming through. Yeah. Well, good we morning go. and thank you very much. Thank you very much for this opportunity to present today. Um, my experience with KPIs is similar to that of Professor Lottie, but there's also some differences in Part of that is geographically related. Um, essentially, KPIs is important to understand. And the primary thing related to KPIs is that they are related to the institution and how the various programs within the institution can demonstrate quality. Most institutions, um, specifically here in the United States, as well as otherwhere, otherwhere will develop a strategic plan. And based upon that strategic plan, there will be strategic objectives that can then in turn become those key performance indicators. Um, the purpose of this is to demonstrate not only compliance with institutional regulatory agencies, but also potentially accrediting agencies, while also um, ensuring that the institution itself is providing quality education. It's typically a strategic plan will have um, some specific objectives. Um, it will have timeframes and then it will be reviewed and revised based upon those timeframes. When the strategic plan is revised, the institution and the programs will then also need to ensure that they review any key performance indicators that they have had prior to. Relative to that, as the institution is setting their key performance indicators, it is essential that all participants across all disciplines understand how they are linked to the strategic objectives and how they will be utilized by the institution as well as within the programs and various departments. Each KPI needs to be clearly articulated and understood by all participants. In order to get quality data, everyone needs to understand the information that is being sought. Um, additionally, if the intent is to have the data related to the overall institution, then the KPIs need to be overarching and apply to multiple disciplines. In my experience, KPIs have a tendency to be related to one of three things. One thing could be student learning outcomes. A second thing would be institutional program outcomes as well as certain aspects of the overall college or university. Oftentimes, key performance indicators can be linked to institutional mission and philosophy and or to the core values of the institution. Again, the primary purpose is to ensure that the institution is providing quality education to the students who attend, as well as providing a supportive environment for the faculty and staff, as well as the students. The college or university may establish a set of overall student learning outcomes that all students, regardless of the discipline, are expected to meet 
while completing a degree at that institution. Examples could be related to the concept of critical thinking. And the overall outcome for the college or university could be to develop the ability to critically think, to use this information in decision-making. Institutions also oftentimes will establish what I will refer to as overall outcomes for both the college and university. And Professor Lottie referred to some of these as being required by the NCAA. Such things as graduation rates, um, job placement rates, satisfaction rates, those are some um, institutional wide outcomes, but they also have direct application to the disciplines and the various programs offered within an institution. And the final type of key performance indicator could be related to the overall institution itself. And again, in some of the examples that Professor uh, Laudy provided, these could have a relationship to the faculty the quality of the faculty, perhaps the research that faculty are doing. So any and all of these can be a component of key performance indicators. So the key to developing key performance indicators for an overall institution, if these performance indicators are not required by a particular agency, if the institution decides that they would like to set additional factors to review, or have the opportunity to develop their own key performance indicators, it's important to have a number of um, disciplines present as you're developing the key performance indicators. Even if those key performance indicators are uh, required by an agency, it's important to have multiple uh, representatives at the table to help them to understand the purpose and the rationale behind the key performance indicators and to work together to determine how these indicators and the data related to the indicators will be collected. It's key that if overall um, outcomes are being reviewed by the institution, that each of the colleges and the various disciplines are providing similar types of data so that the overall institutional data will make sense and it can come together. Again, it does require everyone at that table to understand the rationale behind some of the key performance indicators and why they may be applicable to some areas. And as if you're developing your own key performance indicators, it would also be important to ensure that they actually can apply to the multiple disciplines re, um, represented within the institutions. Again, the participants during this process need to recognize opportunities that they have to not only maintain the quality of their programs and the overall institution, but also look for other opportunities where they can stretch themselves and grow and actually set higher um, benchmarks. A component in developing an institutional KPI is how that achievement will be measured. So even from the very beginning, you need to keep in the back of your mind, what type of data are you going to collect? Because it's gonna be critical as that um, benchmark is set, as that KPI is set, how will the data be collected? In the process, consideration must be given to the various disciplines and departments who will be collecting the data. Uh, whether the same type of data is going to be collected across all disciplines, um, how that data is going to be collected, uh, the frequency that that data will be collected, as well as the relevancy to not only the institution, but the relevancy to the department. Participants will uh, need to know how and where that data will need to be supplied um, to the institution as a whole To And another important factor is to ensure as you're collecting data that there's sufficient data collected. Oftentimes as we're collecting data, we get a little bit of information and then we make a decision. Well, sometimes that decision is premature if there's not enough information that has been collected. And so that's why it's important over time and for the overall institution to determine that frequency upon which the data will actually be analyzed. The institution may need to develop the actual assessment tools to collect data and potentially each department may then need to develop its own tools in order to provide assessment. And this is particularly important if a key performance indicator is related to student outcomes. 
because a broad student learning outcome for the overall institution has to have um, an, a, a relationship to the actual discipline and the discipline specific qualities. Another important component of setting and designing key performance indicators is the communication. The communication regarding why they, it's important, the rationale for setting that key performance indicator, and then also being transparent as to what will be done with the information that is collected. Again, having multiple disciplines involved from the beginning can assist in providing this type of transparency. Another decision regarding the transparency is how and who the information will be communicated with. Uh, which communities of interest outside of the institution will have access to the data. Um, if the key performance indicator is tied to institutional or programmatic accrediting agencies, then how and when will this information be reported? Um, and again, where is the information available to the various communities of interest? And so transparency is also equally important relative to that. And that concludes my overview specific to the first topic. Going into the second topic regarding how um, you set benchmarks for the institution. Again, a lot here will depend upon which type of key performance indicator we're actually trying to develop. As previously indicated, having multiple people and disciplines at the table from the very beginning will assist in ensuring that the institutional KPIs will have application to the various programs and departments. The group synergy during this planning process institutionally can assist those representatives to take the information back um, regarding the intent as well as the need to collect the data at the programmatic or departmental level. Depending upon the type of KPI established by the institution, will determine how each department will need to respond. If the key performance indicators are related to overall institutional student learning outcomes, then the programs and departments will need to map those outcomes to program student learning outcomes. Oftentimes, program student learning outcomes are related to the basic entry-level roles that the discipline is preparing their graduates for. The majority of the time, institutional KPIs are very broad and therefore are, allow increased specificity at the program or departmental level. A consideration and planning process is whether to allow disciplines to have additional program student learning outcomes above and beyond those required by the institutional student learning outcomes. If so, then also establishing whether the institution wants data related to all the student learning outcomes or only those pertaining to the overall institution would be an important factor to consider in the overall planning process. If, however, the KPIs are related to the institutional outcomes, such as graduation rates, um, all departments and disciplines need to determine the graduation rates. What is going to be important though, is that you're using common definitions. For example, when does the clock begin ticking to determine that graduation rate? Is it from the first course? Is it once they've completed that introductory year? Exactly when the program completion rates will be measured from. It's also um, important that a common time frame be in mind. If you're looking at program completion rates, are you looking at on-time program completion rates or are you looking at completion rates within say 150% of the time frame, or sometimes programs and institutions will also just look at ultimate completion rates, indicating that any student who ultimately completes the program would be considered in the data. This will assist in determining how students are counted as they, um, if they sit out for a particular academic term. And that's just one example related to an institutional outcome. Um, a second example could be job placement. Again, what is the time frame for that job placement relative to graduation? Um, is job placement only if they have a job within the discipline for which they were prepared? Or are you looking at any type of job? Or in some cases, perhaps it's a job or advanced uh, enrolling in an advanced degree program. 
Again, if the key performance indicators are related to other factors such as faculty or scholarly activities, then the department will need to ensure that faculty members are required to provide information regarding those components. Um, if faculty recruitment and or retention are challenging for a particular discipline, how are those factors considered? A primary key is determining how institutional key performance indicators have application to the program. And what I've done is provide several examples of how that might be seen. This first example is comparing institutional student learning outcomes to discipline specific student learning outcomes. Um, with my background being in nursing, my examples are specific to nursing. But for example, in this um, table, you see that the overall institutional objective or key performance indicators is to ensure that students will be able to solve problems using qualitative, uh, quantitative methods, data analysis, and or critical thinking. And so the, the nursing or the College of Nursing would then have to go and determine how that institutional performance indicator correlates to the nursing specific. And two examples could be applying nursing judgment in the management of care of clients to improve quality and safety and promote health of clients. But perhaps the second in the program um, outcome for nursing could be manage the care of patients integrating best current evidence. So again, the key for the disciplines, once the key performance indicators have been defined, is determining what that looks like in that particular department, especially again, if it's related to student outcomes. A second example is when a key performance indicator is related to outcomes in general. And Professor Lottie's presentation had a lot of these integrated within his slides. Um, an overall outcome at the institutional level does have direct correlation to those at the programmatic or departmental level. Um, again, the key is to have quality and meaningful institutional data. So therefore, ideally, all disciplines must be using the same definitions. They must be using the same timeframes for that data that is being collected. Another key would be to ensure that the type of data is comparable. Um, and we're gonna discuss that a little bit more when I uh, discuss setting benchmarks here in a moment. But again, some of those institutional outcomes could be that there's uh, management of program quality assurance through course objectives, through program evaluation, through overall graduation rates, overall student satisfaction, overall job placement, and comparison to other institutions and programs. And so what would be important is that the College of Nursing or the other colleges look at how that correlates to their student performance. Um, if the overall benchmark has been set by the institution, then it will be important that the individual colleges be looking at those benchmarks uh, from a global perspective. And then the final example that I had relative to key performance indicators is when they're broader in nature and they're more um, global relative to the institution and therefore more global to the program or department. Examples of this could be faculty, the qualifications of faculty, the number of faculty, um, the number of tenured faculty. Um, in some institutions, uh, part of the key performance could be those faculty to student ratios and the various types of learning environments. Um, many institutions may have key performance indicators related to the research or to the scholarly uh, production of their faculty, be it in publications or presentations, um, as well as some institutions will have um, a va um, institutional value related to community engagement. And so therefore one of the key performance indicators is rel related to community engagement, not only at the overall institutional level, but also within the various programs. So let's talk about those benchmarks. How do you determine if you are not provided the benchmark by um, an outside agency to set those benchmarks? The first thing that you need to determine is what you are attempting to measure. Uh, a key to uh, establishing an expected level of achievement or benchmark is knowing what you are measuring. For example, if you're measuring a person's ability to critically think, 
How will you know that they're critically thinking? Knowing is that there is a single concept being measured or whether or not, for example, a end of program outcome or a student learning outcome has multiple components and therefore you're needing to multi, uh, measure multiple aspects of that student learning outcome. Effective measurement and meaningful data is based upon selecting appropriate assessment methods. An assessment method, as uh, Professor Lottie has indicated, may be a direct assessment method um, where that provides objective data, what, such as um, versus subjective data, which may uh, are indirect assessment method, which provides subjective data, such as a survey um, and individuals um, perception on how well or how satisfied they were. What you need to ask yourself as you're determining which type of data to use is which type of data will provide you the most meaningful information, information that you can use to inform your decision making, not only at an institutional level, but at the departmental level. Again, the type of assessment method is often based upon the concept that you're trying to measure within a student learning outcome specifically. So if you're trying to measure a concept related to cognitive learning, to effective learning or psychomotor learning, oftentimes that may drive your decision on what type of assessment method needs to be utilized. Again, the KPIs related may require multiple assessment methods to ensure that the overall outcome has been addressed. Um, an expected level of achievement or benchmark should also reflect the type of data that's being collected. For example, if the tool that you're using to collect your data is a five-point Likert scale or has a five-point Likert scale, then your benchmark oftentimes will be a mean and you may set the mean at 4.0 or higher. Another example of a benchmark would be a number of students who graduate within a time frame would lend itself to a percentage as being the type of data being collected versus a mean. Or if the assessment method was a standardized examination, then perhaps the expected level of achievement or benchmark is related to the scores that the students achieve on that examination or subscores within the examination. And oftentimes, if it's a standardized type test, there could be a national benchmark that has been established that you are attempting to provide your students with. But again, the key is making sure that as that benchmark is set, that it provides the program and the institutional meaningful information. Because if the information is not meaningful, then it doesn't lend itself to um, facilitate that decision-making process. So what are some factors to consider if you have the opportunity to set your own expected levels of achievement or your own benchmarks? Number one, consider historical data that may be available to you. Um, the data may be from within the college and the previous performance of your students, um, such as graduation rates within the institution. Um, historical data could be from outside external sources, and it's their historical data that you use to, upon which to base your benchmarks. Another possibility is related to um, just being genuine and realistic and setting a specific goal. For example, a, a benchmark that students will pass the test is not very specific and it will not necessarily provide you a lot of meaningful information. But if you set the benchmark that 80% of the students will score 85% or higher on a subscale related to critical thinking, that can provide you much more meaningful information upon which to uh, base your decisions. An example I like to give is when you set a benchmark of 80% will pass, well, what does that really mean? Um, that's the minimum benchmark that can be set. And technically that could mean that a student misses 20% and that 20% could have been surrounding a specific student learning outcome. So in essence, they passed, but they haven't met the benchmark specific to the student learning outcome. Another thing to consider is setting stretch goals or what I call a stretch goal. I, again, even when the institution is perhaps provided a minimum benchmark, and Professor Lottie also referred to this, 
But what are those stretch goals? How are you wanting to improve yourself to be even better than what you are today? And so that's also needs to be considered in setting a benchmark related to your key performance indicators. A component of verifying achievement of an expected level of achievement is, as I've mentioned before, ensuring that you have sufficient information upon which to base that. You know, determine in the beginning what type of data is being collected, how many people are contributing to this co collection and how often are you collecting the data? Because without sufficient information, oftentimes premature decisions can be made related to the key performance indicator. Another component to consider with your data, and uh, Professor Laudy uh, alluded to this, is whether or not you need to look at the overall aggregate data that you have available to you versus looking at disaggregate data specific to a location, specific to um, a program option to determine if some of these subgroups within the overall uh, institution are actually hitting the benchmarks that you've set. Once an expected level of achievement or benchmark has been set, then the data collection needs to occur. However, at some point, you also have to take the time to analyze that data. Um, and once you analyze the data, you need to really look, has that benchmark been met or was it partially met? Did you say that you were going to increase by 10%, but you only increased by 5%? So critically looking at what the data is telling you and using that data to then establish responses um, to if, if you haven't uh, had a sufficient number of publications, how are you going to respond to that? What measures are going to be put into place so that faculty have that opportunity to uh, provide additional publications, to have that opportunity for research? If the student satisfaction wasn't where you had wanted it to be, what were some of those contributing factors to the decreased satisfaction? How can you change those factors so that moving forward, the data will show improvement? Another key important thing related to key performance indicators as well as benchmarks is that that benchmark should not be static. You need to periodically review that benchmark to verify um, does it need to stay the same? Is it time to raise the bar, so to speak, so that students and faculty perform at a higher level? Did you perhaps set an unrealistic benchmark to begin with? And the opposite needs to occur, where you actually need to lower that benchmark because the expectation was too high. What's critical when you revise the benchmark is to provide um, ad additional information and rationale and also to be looking at, is there other factors that perhaps need to be considered in reestablishing the benchmark? And then finally, relative to the paperless system. Going paperless is, um, is critical um, because it does become better uh, ecolog ecologically friendly for individuals but it also helps with the multiple disciplines or the multiple programs within an institution to have a common source of where they can put their data, especially the data that is specific to overall institutional key performance indicators. Um, the paperless system though, I want to encourage folks to consider, it doesn't have to be um, a expensive high-end software product. Paperless systems can be simple access spreadsheets or Excel spreadsheets. And for some programs or institutions that may be just starting with key performance indicators at the institutional level, you may wanna try some of the simpler means of going paperless um, initially before you spend money investing in software products. It's critical that the system be user friendly so that all the various disciplines and programs putting data into the system understand it um, from their own perspective and that it is intuitive how the data is put in there. Because as we know, garbage in is garbage out. If the data is put into the system incorrectly, then the outcomes overall will not be what you're looking for because if individuals are putting in different types of information, 
then you're not able to provide the overall statistics for the institution, or in some cases, the overall statistics specific to the program. If possible, uh, there needs to be opportunities outside of the institutional key performance indicators, because I'm a firm believer that if faculty have to go to multiple places in order to put in the data that's essential for the discipline, for the department, then sometimes that data collection process gets muddy, gets um, more challenging because there's multiple places where I'm having to put the information in. And so within the um, ACEN, one of the things that we encourage is that if you're required by your institution to collect data, if you're required by your uh, uh, regulatory agency for nursing to collect data, as well as the ACEN, have a one-stop shop, so to speak. Have a paperless system so all of the various components that you're collecting is put into a single place. And then for each of those agencies, you can pull out this data that's specific to that agency, but at least it puts it in uh, a single place so that you can look at it globally. And again, another key performance indicator as far as the data the system, the paperless system would be, is to ensure that the system itself will generate those statistics so that as multiple users are putting it in, um, the system is generating the statistics for not only the individual disciplines, but also for the overall institution. And that concludes my comments at this time. Well, well thank you so much, uh, Dr. Nell. Uh, let me just, uh, uh, if you allow me, uh, just summarize uh, before we go for question and answer. We have really plenty of a question for uh, uh, our delegates today. Um, uh, just uh, Professor Ladi, he mentioned in the topic one, how does an institution design and measure KPI for its academic program and effectively communicate, communicate the findings? Uh, space travel uh, model of KPI uh, described above the KPI for NCAA. And by the way, one of the people asking what is NCAA, what is EEC? EEC is the Education Evaluation Commission for Saudi Arabia. And uh, NCAA is the center for national uh, accreditation, which is for the local accreditation institutional and program. Uh, Dr. Ladi mentioned two types of KPI, number based on, uh, based uh, and uh, opinion based approved KPI design given by NCAA, risk and anticipated in KPI measurement, how to solve the risk arising. Uh, also mentioned to approach uh, to communication, the findings are uh, complementary, not mutually exclusive, complementary approach uses color coding, uh, uh, use color coding, and this is really, a I really like, and, uh, and it's a unique, and interpretation at high quality, um, acceptable and improvement required. In topic two, he mentioned there are a five level of benchmarking criteria for fixing and revising targets benchmark, and also based on the data trend, which uh, depicts that the level of performance of the program in the three. Um, uh, uh, Dr. Nell really in her presentation uh, mentioned KPI helps an organization understand how well it is performing concerning its strategic goals and objective. KPI are clearly linked to a strategic objective. Uh, also mentioned KPI should be clear about its use institution. KPI should apply to the academic program, overall student uh, 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 learning of uh, 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 learning uh, outcomes for the institution should it should tie to core values of the institution. This is really important. KBI are related to faculty student uh, research, uh, institutional outcome for academic program, job placement, graduation rate, certification, pass rate. This is also has to be washed out carefully. Um, also, she mentioned about the assessment method utilized should apply to all anticipated, determine the frequency of the data as analyzed within the discipline and university need to have transparency. Thank you, Neil. Academic program need to map the student um, specific to the program. Faculty should identify KPI related to overall institution. Um, 
paper list system, uh, she mentioned it's uh, managing KPI. If you allow me, uh, Prof. Ladi and Dr. Uh, Nell, uh, there is really uh, uh, questions now. I will have uh, Prof. Ladi. Prof. Ladi, are you with me? There is a certain question now. I, I, I am with you. I'm, I'm yes. With you. Um, one of one of the one of the audience mentioned that what is what are the challenges that was can anticipate in the KPI management in your in your point of view? What's the question again, sir? What are the what, is, what are the challenges that oh, we the challenges? can? Oh yes, oh yes, yes, yes. Madam, thank you very much for going over the details uh, so um, meticulously, and uh, that's very very helpful. Now, the challenges in the, uh, dealing with the KPIs are first of all to be aware that all of them are not equal. Some are more difficult than the others. That's number one. I made that clear in the presentation. The second challenge is to understand that um, you're looking, when you're looking for the opinion based uh, KPIs, you need to uh, obtain a, a minimum response rate before the, your finding becomes valid. That minimum response rate, according to Institute of Polia, should be at least 50%. And to get that, it's not always easy. So that is one challenge that you should anticipate and learn how to deal with it. Dealing with that uh, particular challenge requires the, the very one single word, engagement, engagement. You need to find ways and means of engaging, as Madame indicated earlier, whether they're students, exclusively students you are, you are targeting, or whether they're alumni who have just left your, your university, or whether you are targeting the employers of your products to get them engaged in the process of getting data from them so that they do it consistently and conscientiously and do it on time and give it sufficient numbers to satisfy the minimum requirement rate is not easy. So these are some of the challenges that you expect. Now, the use of the information that you procure at the end of this rather tiring uh, uh, exercise, you need, as I said, to be spoiled from the top. When the top man, that is the university council, his excellencies do not support you, they do not give you the resources you require, you sweat and sweat blood. But when they support you, you'll be smiling like they did when while I was there not so long ago, Ahmed. Uh, so you need to be supported from the top. Thank you very much, indeed. Well, thank you, Prof. Ladi. Um, uh, I have also plenty of a question to Dr. Nell. Dr. Nell, one of the audience asking, what is the difference between KBIs and KR, KRIs, which is the key result indicators? They, in some places, they could be the same, um, but again, the key performance indicators typically um, are related to those components that have been set um, at an institutional level that then filter down to the discipline specific level. Um, and so, but they can, they can result in similar type data. They can be related to similar themes. Okay, uh, Prof. Ladi, there is, a, there is a question here from one of the audience. Can you suggest the most uh, appropriate way for fixing target KPI, whether we need to follow arithmetic method and or consensus approach? Thank you very much. <clears throat> Fortunately, it's not either or, it's mm -hmm. both. The arithmetic approach will give you numerically from the very beginning, the average of year minus one, minus two, and minus three, that gives you that particular internal benchmark. Then you give a range between, or between five and 20% plus what your next 
uh, uh, um, uh, KPI, your next target for the next academic year zero plus one must not be at, must be at least more than the one before, so that you are, you are always getting improvement and not regressing. You must be improving. So it is always important to take the opinion first at the lower level that is members of your committee, the steering committee in charge of the KPI in your department. Then you come to a level of the, of the college. Then after I come to a level of the deanship and then level of the vice presidency and, and so on. So unless, as I said, you have this interwoven link from the beginning to the top, you'll be stuck between the one or the other, when in fact, should be a blend of all three. Above all, take the opinion of those who have been there before and take the input of the young ones as well. Uh, thank you, Prof. Ladi. Um, the, another question for, uh, for Dr. Nell. What is a good KPI in your point of view? What are the essential ingredients to make a KPI useful from the strategic point of view? Well, I think a useful KPI can vary from institution to institution. Um, a lot of times it has to do with upon the values and the mission and philosophy of a particular institution. Now, you will see that um, several KPIs are um, utilized by all institutions. And so, you know, program completion, job placement, those are very commonly seen. Um, and I think it's important for the institution as well as the departments and the programs to determine what is important to them. What are the factors they're wanting to collect data on? Uh, what are the factors that they're wanting to demonstrate that, that they're providing quality um, education for? Because those can be the driving force behind determining what are important KPIs specific to an institution and or a program. Well, thank you, Nip. Um, Prof. Lali, if you allow me, there is a question which is uh, uh, the, the more than audience asking about it, they're asking about the basic, which is what is the difference between KPIs and performance indicator? They want clarification. Uh, oh, no, actually, this was said at the beginning. You have yes. a range of, um, of, uh, of uh, variables that determine the performance in general. For example, you can say that uh, uh, how the students assess your lecturing skills is one performance indicator. How the students assess how you dress is another performance indicator. But out of the, there's one or two others which are key. They are regarded as more important and most important, most valuable for the for the that is for the for the uh, tar to, to target uh, the the mission of the university as a whole is these which are selected from the selected from the selected is the cream of the cream of the cream of indicators that's why they're called key performance indicators thank you thank you uh, 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 dr nell uh, there is a couple of questions about the benchmarking from the audience. We're going to move that, uh, that to that area. The, the, uh, it's, uh, it's one question. What are the challenges while exchanging the good practice with a suitable external benchmarking? Can you repeat the question? Yeah. What are the challenges while exchanging the good practice with a suitable external benchmark? Marking partner internationally? Um, again, part of, part of the key to benchmarking is understanding um, the goals of the institution and the program itself. But then when an external agency is actually providing the benchmark, it's also understanding the rationale for that benchmark based upon that agency. 
And so, um, for example, the um, ACEN sets a benchmark for our programs that um, licensure pass rates, which are discipline specific, um, be at a minimum of 80%. Um, because that's the minimum level set. Now, with our international programs, not all countries have a licensure exam. There are other ways within that country that um, nurses are eligible to serve as nurses. And, and oftentimes that's with an extensive exit exam there at the institution. And so it's helping not only to understand the definition of that key performance indicator from the outside agency, but then taking that definition and applying it to the way it conforms within the institution. And I would always encourage individuals or programs, if you're not 100% sure what the outside agency is saying and why they've said that, then reach out and ask for clarification from that agency. Well, um, there is another question for Prof. Ladi. Uh, uh, Dr. Brofladi, how to ensure the, the reliability of the KBI's data collected, in your point of view? <laughs> oh, oh, what a mushkila <laughs> <Yes. laughs> <clears throat> The word re reliability, yes. how uh, Madame mentioned the, the transparency, she mentioned truthfulness, it was also mentioned. Uh, in this day and age where the data are, are collected online, how do you make sure that uh, colleagues do not uh, sort of connect with each other and agree on what answer to give? How can you be sure that the, the results are reliable, defined as authentic, believable, and um, actually accurate? Okay, well, um, uh, just, uh, let, 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 let me just answer the question. Yes, sure. It is one of the most, um, uh, this is why you have to assume on the one, the best, you have to assume that the respondents have been truthful, but you can test them. You can test and retest. There's a process called test and retest. You can try that technique if you are beginning to get consistently the same kind of uh, assessments coming through. It's always four or out of five, always three out of five, nothing seems to change. Then it becomes, you are uncomfortable with the authenticity of the data. Then you can cross check again. But before I, I, I leave, let me just add one thing before I forget. Origin of the, of the benchmark is very important. In the yeah. uh, AU, the origin of the benchmark is from royalty itself. In other words, the, the EEC and the NCAA, they are very well resourced. They go to great lengths. They go to great consultations. They go to great data sources to ensure that what they give you is really very excellent. And then they give you a choice to add to that if you wish. So the 17 which have been selected and approved for the programs, you have a choice to add to that, but it's your headache. If you choose another KPI, which is not fit for purpose, it will be ejected. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and there is, uh, as long as we speak about reliability, there is a question for Dr. Nell about validity here. How to cross validate the KPI findings while you are using a paperless system. Well, again, as Professor Laudy says, a lot depends upon the source of the data itself um, and the reliability of that. You have to assume, especially related to um, surveys or your indirect data, that the individuals responding are going to be open and authentic as well as provide uh, realistic data. Um, and, and that's why in many cases, your better data can be the direct assessment methods with, that uh, aren't someone's opinion. That being said, a lot of key performance indicators lend themselves to um, that subjective information re relative to satisfaction, et cetera. And so a part of it is a trust. Um, and 
The key is we're all about improving our educational systems and providing that quality education. And so taking the data and um, looking at it critically, but also uh, responding to what the data may be telling you, even if it's telling you something you may not want to hear. Um, it's, it's taking that opportunity to improve upon uh, not only a program, but also the institution itself. Thank you, Dr. Nell. Um, I have plenty of a question because of the time. I would like to thank everyone, uh, Dr. Fahid Al-Mubarak, Dr. Shadia Youssef, uh, Dr. Amani Rashid, Dr. Muhammad Abdul, Dr. Awadallah, Dr. Sali, Dr. Azza, Dr. Nuzha, all the people they really asking um, uh, if we didn't uh, have enough answer for you, we are also we're going to send uh, the question what you ask for our delegates and you will receive by mail the answer. Uh, before we close, I think this is very important segments in our webinar. We call it final thoughts, which is I mean final thoughts. This is the final thoughts for the delegates. This is the cream summary of their thoughts about the topic itself. Can we have, can we uh, uh, start with the Prof. Laddie, please? I present that. Yes, please. Your final thoughts, please. The foundation of this presentation has been the IAU. Its vision is to be a leading university that achieves excellence nationally originally and globally. KPIs are defined as selected indicators regarded as particularly important for the purpose of assessing performance. The EEC NCAA is the origin of the 17 KPIs listed here. Universities and the QM structures are the stations and the programs are the destinations. The 17 KPS have been found fit for purpose. That's number one. Number two, we explore the principles of benchmarking. Attention was drawn to two cardinal features. Without its benchmark, a KPI remains half baked cake. And finally, flexibility and responsiveness to KPIs must be maintained as circumstances require. A benchmark is a reference, is a reference, is a reference. For each benchmark, five levels of benchmark, for each KPI, sorry, five benchmarking are prescribed. These three criteria set for selecting external benchmarks merely stand for birds of the same feather flock together. Thank you. Thank you so much, Prof. Uh, final thoughts for Dr. Neil R, please. As the institution is setting its KPIs, it's essential that the participants understand how they are linked to the strategic objectives, how they will be utilized by the institution as well as within the program or department. Ideally, um, the KPI is clearly articulated and understood by all participants. Additionally, if the intent is to have the data related to the overall institution, then the KPIs need to be overarching and apply to multiple disciplines and academic programs. Typically key performance indicators are related to student learning outcomes, institutional outcomes, and or components of the institution itself, such as faculty, research, or community engagement. A key to developing KPIs for the overall institution is to have input from a variety of resources as well as from multiple disciplines. Having people involved with development also will assist those individuals to be more accepting of the KPIs and the work involved in obtaining data related to the KPIs to verify their achievement. A key to establishing the expected levels of achievement or benchmark is knowing what you are measuring. Effective measurement and meaningful data are based upon selecting appropriate assessment methods. The expected level of achievement or benchmark should be reflective of the type of data being collected. And a component of verifying achievement of the expected level of achievement or benchmark is to ensure that sufficient data has been collected. And once this data has been collected, the expected level of the data collection needs to occur. 
And then at some point, the data must be analyzed. Again, expected levels of achievement or benchmarks also need to be periodically reviewed as to whether or not they need to be increased or changed. Thank you, Dr. Nell. Um, uh, well done. Uh, this is the final thoughts. And if you allow us uh, this final thoughts, it will be uh, tweeted by the university uh, Twitter as well. Uh, just to make sure this uh, summarization to be there um, and, and, and documented. Before we thank our delegates, I just want to remind, uh, uh, to remind our delegates, uh, our, uh, our audience, you can hear uh, anytime the webinar on our uh, Deanship of Equality and Academic Accreditation YouTube, just DQA at DQA uh, at YouTube. Uh, and uh, hopefully by tomorrow you're gonna find it. You can hear it again and again. Um, uh, also, uh, uh, there is a certificate for attendance. Uh, you, you can have it, you can have it all. Um, and also last, uh, um, uh, I would like to, uh, I welcome you all to register for the, our next webinar, and that will be in June 14, 2021. Um, but in the name of His Excellency uh, Professor Arubaish and the, uh, the uh, uh, Imam Abdurrahman bin Faisal environment, I would like to thank you so much, Professor Lade Wazurnu and uh, Dr. Nil R, uh, for their uh, participation. Uh, it was really informative. Uh, we learn a lot, uh, as usual, from, uh, from uh, uh, I mean, uh, a quality provider and the quality long years of work in that, in that, in that field. I really appreciate it again, and I hope to see you uh, in, in the nearest. If you, there is anything you can say, Prof. Ladi, Dr. Nell, the floor is yours before we say goodbye. Just once again, thank you very much, um, His Excellency, for this invitation, Ahmed, for saying that it's true. And Dr. Ad, thank you so much for being a, a, such a, a very, very well, well informed, resourceful uh, panelist, co panelist. Thank you very thank much. You. Dr. Nell? Yes, again, thank you very much for this opportunity and for participating today. And thanks for everyone who listened to us. Have a great day. Have a great day. Have a great day for all. Thank you, Nell. Thank you, Prof. Ladi. And thank you, my audience for uh, ha having you here and thank you so much. See you later. Thank you. Bye. We thank participants from, uh, from, on the, from, from the other part of the world, please, Ahmed. Yes, yes, thank indeed. You. We have uh, all over the world from America, yes. London, Ghana, India, yes. Pakistan. We have today uh, from, uh, from, New from New Zealand, uh, from Africa as well, different parts of Africa. Thank you so much for all. I really appreciate their attendance, honestly. Thank yes. you. And we hope, to see you, we hope to see you again within our next webinar. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Prof.